Here's another vectors application problem. Uh, this time it's in three dimensions. Take a moment, read it, and then see if you can come up with some of these scenarios yourself as you go. All right, so an aircraft is flying in a straight line. At any given moment, when t equals zero, it has a position vector. 8,009. Yeah, that big stuff. And this is the velocity vector. It wants to find the speed of the aircraft. Well, the speed of the aircraft is going to come from my velocity vector, which is this, this one here. And so I know if I want the speed, if I call this vector v, the speed is just the magnitude of that vector. And so I'm going to find the square root of negative 35 squared plus negative 10 squared plus negative 50 squared. And when I do that... So that's all the square root of 3,825, which okay. ends up being about 61.8. 61.8, and that's the three significant figures. We haven't given any units here at all. Uh, um, line, T's, position vector, velocity vector, no, no units. So maybe it's meters per second, we don't know. Okay, so that's A part, just the magnitude. Now write down, down, write down in terms of T, the equation of the flight path. Well, if currently the aircraft is at this location, and he's going in this direction and that speed, then we can make an equation of a line. So the equation of my aircraft line, we'll call it A for aircraft, is going to be... Starting point, 8,000. 2,050 and 13,000. We're going to add that to t times our direction vector, so negative 35 minus 10 minus 50. Right, and this is for when t is bigger than or equal to 0, because that's what I was told. Right. Okay, so there's my equation of the flight path. That's where the, that is where my aircraft is going to travel. Okay, so now let's take that to the next part, which I need. And part C says, find the value of T when the aircraft touches down. Now, we have to think about what our graph looks like. Right. And it, this, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, the, the axis now is ax, x-axis is due north. The y-axis is vertically upwards. And the x is due east. The z is due east. Oh, z, sorry. Right. Yeah. I knew what you meant. <laughs> you were thinking Z, but you said X. That happens to me all the time. Okay, so I want vertically upward. So that means my graph, here is the Y. Here is, let's say, east. Okay. So that is my Z axis. And then that way is north, which is uh, the X. X axis. And so the airplane is up here in the sky, and he's coming down. I know he's going to be down when my y value is 0, because that's my vertical up. So I want to make my y value to be 0. So if I go to my equation, I'm going to let y equal 0. Now we can solve for t. It's the ground. Oh, okay. Okay. We let y equal 0. So uh, 0, just looking at my y, is 2050 minus 10t, and so t equals 205. And, and whatever it, that time is. Right, yeah. they didn't give us any units that I noticed, so it's just 205 seconds, hours, minutes, who knows. Now it says, show that the aircraft lands on the airstrip, airstrip and find the distance after it touches down. Well, if this aircraft is going to land on the airstrip. Let's go look at this equation here for the aircraft. Here, or here's the airstrip. Yeah, there, there it's given to you. Okay. If my aircraft is going to land on here, this line has... So here's my airstrip here. Okay. This point here, where it touches the ground, has to be on this line. So... We have to go find the point. We know when T touches the, is when it touches the ground. We find the actual coordinate of this equation, and then we see if it is on the airstrip. 
Okay, so going back, when right. T is 205. Right, so I want to find the aircraft's position. So I know 8,000, 2050, 13,000, plus 205 is my T, negative 35, negative 10, negative 50. Okay, so our first X value, mm -hmm. we get to be 825. 5, 0, I know y is 0. And then the next one, 13,000. Hmm. Is 2,750. Okay, so this here is the point where it lands, it meaning the aircraft lands. That's all from part C still. Right. So now we're using that. Right. So this value here, we want to see if this point is on the airstrip. So if we take this value and we take our airstrip here, this equation, I'm going to just do it here. Can you remember what that point was? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. 8250. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. Maybe I'll steal it. Okay. Let me steal it. And... Oh. Uh. I, got, I got it. Don't you worry. got it? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to plug in eight. That point was eight two five two five zero and two thousand seven hundred and fifty. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty. That's the point. We want to know does that hold true for this vector right. equation? Right. I'm going to convert it to. I can just read it so much better when it's in vector like form. This. I know. Me too. There's no y, and it's twenty eight fifty plus oh minus. S. S. I'm also not a big fan of S's because my fives and S's often I know. look the same. <laughs> yeah. Seven and ten. Okay. Well, the Y value works. Zero, 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 zero. It's all zeros. All right. So now just make sure that the X value works. Right. So I get eight twenty-five equals eight nine five minus seven S. So for S we get ten. Equals 10. Oh, I'm liking that nice round number. Okay, now we just have to check with the last one. All right, so 2750 equals 2850 minus, I'm going to plug 10 in actually. Okay. Times 10. This is minus 100. 2850 equals 2750. That is true. So we're good. So the question was saying, Show that the aircraft lands on the strip. We've shown it now. Now it says find the distance after it touches down in which it must stop. Okay, find the distance. Hmm, what do we have to do for that? that? Find the distance where it must stop. Here is my restrictions on my landing strip. It's landed already at this coordinate point here. At the airstrip ends when S is 80. So let me, let's erase some of this stuff. It's a small eraser there. Oh, look it, at that oh, little trick. Did you trick. see that trick? I didn't know that I trick. I just learned that. I forget where I learned that, but it's a good one. I was like, that's going to take you forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's plug in 80. So I know my vector equation for my airstrip is 895028850. 50. Minus 80 times 7, 0, and 10. This coordinate is going to be the end of the airstrip. So I'm going to go 895 minus 80 times 70, which is a number I can't do in my head. 80 times 7. Okay. Yep. 335. So 335. 0 is the next one. And 2,050. Okay, so think about this. Here is my airstrip here. The airplane landed here, and this is the point 8250-2750. The end of the airstrip is what we just found. It is 3350-2050. Hmm. We want to find the distance the airplane has to stop. 
So we can find the magnitude of this Between vector. Between these two points, yeah. Or just the distance formula. We have lots of options. But let's, since we're in vectors, let's do all vector stuff. <laughs> That's good fun. You're going to use that, aren't you? I'm totally using it. Yeah. All right, so define, let's call this uh, AP. Define vector AP. Start with P, subtract A. All right, so I get P subtract A. So 335 minus 825 is negative 490. Negative 490, 0, and 700. I negative 700, negative yeah. Negative 700. Now to find the magnitude of AB. We square root. 490 squared plus negative 700 squared. And we get a final answer of, oh, let me make sure that I did that right. Eight hundred and fifty-four. Fifty-four. That is to three significant figures. So, whatever the unit is, this aircraft has eight hundred fifty-four meters. Or that sounds probably reasonable to stop the airplane before he goes off the end of this trip. And the one thing with the vectors is you really have to understand what's going on. If you try and memorize this stuff, you are cooked. You are not going to do it. You have to understand and think about what's going on.